Fani Mutiwa. I am from Angoshi. Angoshi is um, an ancient sultanate in the coastal area of uh, nowadays Nampula province in the, no in the north of Mozambique. Uh, and I'll, I'll share with you uh, s uh, the history, uh, the history of these uh, sheikdoms and sultanates in Mozambique which were ruled by the so-called uh, Shirazi dynasties uh, in this area. Um, well, I will start with uh, the overall influence of Islam in the area of what is currently Mozambique and that the evidences we have uh, going back to the 8th century uh, and uh, further south to what is now in Yambani, in Shibweni, where is an archaeological site dated back to the 8th century. Uh, but uh, the connection of this area of Mozambique to the wider Western Indian Ocean is even earlier than the Eve of Islam, uh, as we know by the history and by the scholars who study this area. So it means that before Islam, uh, Persian and Arab traders came to the region and traded in gold, in amber, and so many other products. But the influence of Islam is very um, important in all this history of the region. And uh, here is where I will concentrate my, 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 my argument. And uh, about that, let me uh, tell you about uh, what I introduced you as the sheikhdoms and sultanates of the region. Uh, when the Portuguese arrived in the, in the eastern coast of Africa, when they reached the Zambezi River, they call this area has, uh, or the, this river has the river of good signals. And what were the signals? The signals were uh, because they found, they saw people dressing like Muslims who were trading and who were living in this area. This was their good signal because their aim was to reach India and Persia and Saudi Arabia where the um, spices, uh, carpets came from and they wanted to control this business and that's why during all their travel when they found these people in the coast of Mozambique, they were happy because this was the, the signal that they were closer to their uh, objective, to their aim. And uh, these people, these Muslim traders in this area, they were actually a part of a huge uh, network, a huge political, uh, economic, and cultural network that was built in this period with its center in Kilwa. Uh, why? Because um, these sheikhdoms, like the sheikhs of Sofala, the sheikh of Kelimani, in the mouth of Zambezi River, north, a bit north to the mouth of Zambezi River, uh, the sultan of Angosh, the sheikh of Mozambique, the sheikh of Kisanga, and, and the, the sultan of Tungi, they were all 
or immigrants from Kilwa. They had migrate, immigrated from Kilwa earlier before the arrival of the Portuguese. And they were, well, there are so many reasons for this um, wave of immigration. And this was not one single wave. There were so many waves of immigrations. What is difficult now is to find out how many waves of immigrations because the evidences we have, they are all uh, in oral format and uh, as we know, oral traditions have this problematic in dating and uh, in uh, giving a accurate chronology. Uh, but what we must be sure is that um, Kilwa has the center of, uh, of the trade and the political center of this area, uh, there was some, a kind of uh, upheaval, political upheaval, but there are those who also associate with a kind of e economical crisis in Kilwa. And some of the princes of Kilwa, they decided to migrate further south and uh, their aim was firstly economic. They wanted to come closer to the source of the gold because the main trade, uh, the main uh, source for the international trade at this period was the gold. And most of this gold came from the, from, from the Zambezi or the, uh, Zimbabwe plateau. Uh, we, we have heard about Great Zimbabwe. Um, so coming to the south, uh, to Sofala, what in Arabic uh, source may appear as Bait as Sofala, was like coming to the source of, the, of gold. And from Sofala, they had this interpol in Shibwene, which was linked to another interpol in Manikeni in what is now uh, in Yambani, uh, but basically in Vilankulu area, where is the, the fortress of Manikeni. This fortress was linked directly to the Great Zimbabwe, and from Great Zimbabwe, or even Great Zimbabwe was also linked to another site in, South, in, in the northern side of South Africa, which is called Mapungubwe, where uh, archaeologists found a huge amount of gold in the burials of the ancient kings of this area, such as in the Great Zimbabwe also. Um, well, and according to the earlier source, even to the Portuguese witness who were the first Europeans to come to the area of East Africa, this Sheikh of, of Sofala and the Sheikh of Mozambique and the Sultan of Angosh and the Sheikh of Kisanga, they were all, or they, have, they had all a kind of kinship link. And this kinship link also came through all the shikdoms in the, what we may call the northern uh, 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 coast of, northern Swahili coast, like Malindi, like Mombasa, like uh, Pate. All of these sheikhs were connected to the sheikhs of to the Sultan of Kilwa. So Kilwa was a kind of suzerain kingdom or suzerain sultanate in the area. And it, its influence is also said to reach even other islands like uh, Comoro and probably some areas of western Madagascar, Bukini, as it comes in the, in the, in the Swahili souls. So coming again to my homeland to Angosh, uh, which is, uh, 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 is called Ngoji in the ancient sources, in Ajami sources in Swahili uh, written in Arabic with Arabic script sources. Uh, 
uh, it was founded by Hassan. And this Hassan had migrated from Kilwa with a friend or cousin or brother. This is at least uh, difficult to, to establish, but they were the, the, the leaders of one of these waves of migration from Kilwa. And uh, they were coming to the south, as I said previously, looking for the source of gold, but also for the new areas, new lands to, to live. Musa uh, founded Mozambique, the Sheikhdom of Mozambique. And apparently, the name of Mozambique, which in Swahili source in, in our local language is Msumbij, according to oral traditions, or some oral tradition, because there are several oral traditions, this name comes from Musa, Musa ibn Bik. Apparently, uh, this was the Musa that the Portuguese found in Mozambique Island. Uh, but there, is a, there are other sources which suggest that the second or, or, or travel of Vasco da Gama, he found another uh, ruler who was Sharif uh, Muhammad ibn al Alawi in Mozambique. And still, it's the same um, Shirazi dynasty. Uh, but what I would like to tell you and to highlight is that his friend, Brad or cousin, Hassan, when he was returning from his travel to Sofala and probably returning to Kilwa or maybe traveling from Kilwa back to Mozambique or to Sofala, he uh, had a misfortune and died in the area of Mozambique and he was buried in a small island in the group of so-called uh, island, uh, Angosh Islands, in what is today known locally as Kisiwan Sultan Hassan. Kisiwan Sultan Hassan. And Musa, when heard about this, he, visit, he visited this area and he found the, bar, the, 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 the tomb of his friend or brother or cousin and he liked the area and he decided to settle in this area the son of Musa, Choza. Choza, son of Hassan, I'm sorry, founded the dynasty of Angosh, the Shirazi dynasty of Angosh that descends from Hassan. Uh, and from, that, from then onward, these people who came from the sea, this Swahili community, they married and they intermarried with Makua communi communities who came from the hinterland and they established the Sultanate of Angosh. Uh, well, this, the intermarriage process is a very long process and uh, it also help it to establish and to extend uh, this, the Sultan of Angosh further to the in the interland and even further to the north and to the south. Uh, in its uh, golden period, Angosh was compared by some Portuguese chronicles as uh, a kind of Napoleonic friends, as they called one of the most memorial, most famous Sultan of Angosh, Sultan Musa Muhammad Sahib Quantum, has the Napoleon of Angosh, because Angosh was very big sultanate. Uh, for those who know this area, it extended from, uh, let's say, uh, Sankul, 
or in the margins of uh, Infusi River in the north, but also with influence even to Sankul and went further to Ligonia River and even after Ligonia to Kizungu River. It was a very huge area, but with the nuclear in, in Angoshi. Thank you.